All righty. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Eric and Greg and all for inviting me. I want to tell you a little bit about a trash monitoring uh, methods project that we're working on. Uh, it's a pro pro project that we're working on in uh, collaboration. How do I? Um, so one of the things that um, has become very uh, prevalent in uh, today is th the fact that we have all kinds of policies that are being passed right now. We have bans uh, on bags and cigarettes and all kinds of things. We also have uh, the trash amendments, which require um, mo some monitoring if you go down a particular path. Because of that, uh, the state is, has been proactive in, in looking at different types of monitoring methods. So that's what this project was, was uh, kind of born out of. Uh, there's all kinds of mo monitoring already going on. However, a lot of this monitoring is being done independently of other groups. So you can say what's going on maybe in your neck of the woods and, and, and looking at a particular aspect of trash, whether it be um, particular items or volume or, or, or some different aspect of trash. But how do we relate that to other areas and, and say, how, am I, how is my area doing relative to the rest of California? Uh, so part of this program, project was to um, try to work on that problem and, and come up with some standardized methods around doing trash monitoring. In April of 2017, we had a con uh, conceptual model workshop where we brought together trash uh, people um, in the trash field from all over the state. We wanted to uh, talk about trash and, and what uh, concerns there were around that. Uh, we uh, wanted to know what the main management questions were. Uh, one of the things that's come out is that there's a lot of questions, but how do we put that into management questions and then translate it into scientific questions? Uh, and we wanted to get recommendations from folks on what their interests were as far as um, early targets in looking at testing and, and validating methods. There was a lot of questions that came out of the meeting. Uh, most people were interested in looking primarily at rivers and streams, at least initially. This project will move on to other environments, I'm sure, as we, as we work through it. Uh, and there was a lot of interest in evaluating some methods that had already been developed. Um, and in, in, in addition to that, looking at some, maybe some new methods. As I said, that uh, one of the challenges is creating the questions that we're looking at when we're looking at trash. We get general questions from management saying, is it getting better or worse? But how do we make that into a science question that we can answer through monitoring? So the group uh, that met spent a lot of time working through different types of questions. And we decided that this was a really good way of looking at the questions and developing the questions, kind of using this model. Um, and then, uh, for example, the one question that we came up with was, you know, has the number of bags in creeks and streams uh, changed within the last five years, and how confident are we in that um, measurement? Um, and we can build some monitoring around that. All right. Uh, so this this pro particular project was is uh, funded by the Ocean Protection Council. It's a three-year project. We're in the middle of year two. Um, my my agency, st the Southern California Coastal Water Research Project, and San Francisco Estuary Institute are partnering in this project, and of course, it's supported by the, the State Water Board. So our approach was to test four methods. Those four methods consisted of three. That methods that had already been developed uh, by folks in the state, and then one novel method. Uh, we, we brought together an advisory committee and asked for their recommendations and advice on which methods to focus on. And what we really want to do, and part of the reason why I'm here today, is to involve stakeholders in the process. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit about what methods we were using and give you a little bit of a taste of the results that we have uh, so far and uh, give you an update on where we're going and how you can participate. So as I said, we had four methods. Uh, we had one that uh, is being used in Southern California. 
by the stormwater, the, the Southern California Stormwater Monitoring Coalition. And it basically is a, a groups going out, they're doing stream surveys, looking at stream condition, but they're also doing trash assessments as part of those stream surveys. Uh, and so what they're doing is they walk a hundred foot stretch of the uh, stream or river and they tally all the items that they see. Uh, and, and they're placed into large categories such as plastics, metals, glass, but under each one of those categories we have a little bit more finer measurements where we're looking at specific items, uh, plastic uh, pieces, uh, caps, uh, bottles, those kinds of things. Uh, we're also performing uh, the uh, volume method done in the Bay Area by the, their stormwater folks where they go out and they do a 300 foot stretch of um, river. They pick up all the trash and they uh, get a volume estimate from that. Both groups uh, have also been doing what we call the rapid trash assessment. Um, and this was um, refined by the Bay Area group and basically it's, it's is there a small amount of trash? Is there low amounts? moderate amounts or uh, high amounts. And uh, basically it involves walking that stretch of stream and giving it a score from one to 12 based on uh, how much trash is perceived by the, the person doing the assessment, with one being the, the least amount and 12 being the most. And then finally, the novel method that we were, were looking at is using, the name has changed, so I'm gonna try to remember it, um, unoccupied um, aerial vehicle um, essentially it's drones um, and, and using drones to collect imagery uh, and, and looking at the imagery, annotating it by hand and then using that to train, using that data set to train um, a machine into, into learning how to determine whether or not there is trash within the image. Uh, so we're, we're working on that as well. So these four methods are being performed at uh, a given site um, at the same time. We want to see how well they compare to one another as well. One of the things that we're looking to do is create a playbook of methods that people can go to um, regardless of user level. We want citizen scientists to be able to use it as well as what I would call those paid to go out and, and monitor trash. Uh, so we're, we're developing this playbook. We're going to have information on all kinds of different things in there, and we're going to. A part of this project includes doing some outreach um, and training. So this is part of the outreach. Why I'm here talking to you guys today. Uh, one of the things we're going to include in this playbook of trash methods is an assessment uh, based on our results of, of comparing the methods of what monitoring question is each me method answering how repeatable or reproducible is it by uh, the same group or different groups? Um, what's the, the bias or the error involved? How close is it to the actual um, uh, truth? Um, and also how many resources are gonna be required to perform each method, uh, be a cost or staff time or whatnot. So where are we at right now? Uh, we finished our first t field testing season uh, we're starting up our second uh, testing season. We had a TAC meeting uh, last month and got some recommendations from them. And uh, so we're, we're, we're also continuing our work on the drone imagery and I'll give you, sh I'll show you some example of that in just a minute. Uh, we, uh, we've been uh, collecting images and annotating them to build that library uh, that we can build uh, the algorithm that uh, it does the machine learning to identify trash within the images and we're communicating uh, with folks. I'm trying. So to give you some of our results, this is a, um, a graph that shows um, each dot represents two teams doing the same site. And what it shows is the difference between those two teams' measurements in the amount of trash that was measured. So the closer to that zero line, the closer those two teams were at that site to measuring the same amounts of trash. And as you can see, as we go out further on that line, the spread becomes a little bit wider, which doesn't, isn't surprising. The other thing we did with this to assess repeatability and reproducibility is we had different groups perform each one of uh, these assessments. So 
each uh, different color and different shape represents a, a team um, that was, let's say, from a citizen science group or a team that was from the Stormwater Monitoring Coalition or a training group versus a well-trained group that um, was out in the field at the same time as them doing the same assessment. One of the other things we wanted to measure was uh, the error uh, rate or the bias. So what we did, each one of these lines represents a single site and the number of passes that were done for each one of those sites. So let's look, if you look at the red line, the top line there, that site had probably 600 pieces of trash and the first uh, pass through, almost 500 of those pieces were found and counted. The second pass, we had just under 100 pieces that we found. And uh, looking at these graphs, what we're seeing is that usually by the second pass, most of the trash has been uh, tallied. Um, so that just gives us an idea of, of how um, good the crews are at picking up the trash. I will say the site with the 600 pieces, the pictures on the right show, how, show the actual trash in the buckets. Doesn't look like there was a lot of trash at that site. It was all very small pieces. Um, there were a lot of cigarettes, a lot of um, small plastic pieces. So um, one of the things that we are uh, potentially going to look at in the second field testing se season is uh, looking at the size of the trash relative to how well people are, are um, accounting for it. We also wanted to compare each one of those methods to one another, and this is one of those comparisons. So uh, this did volume versus uh, the qualitative method, which was that method of walking the assessment area and visualizing it and giving it a score. Those two um, methods seem to match up really well. There seems to be a high correlation between what you're seeing and how much you are collecting. So this is, this is the fun stuff, the drone stuff, and I will say that um, the San Francisco Estuary Institute is doing most of the work around this, um, but what they've been doing is flying a lot and annotating imagery um, as they're going. So each one of those green uh, marks is actually a mark that somebody has placed on the image identifying it as at that particular spot as having trash. If we zoom into that area, um, and pick an area, um, just a, a small subset, what you can see is that there are some items that you can actually identify. There's a plastic bag, a child's toy, a, a little car, um, a plastic water bottle. So we're able to pick up some specific items. Now we wanted to compare this to another one of our methods, so we compared it to the tally method. Uh, we identified approximately 270 items uh, with the tally method, but looking through the drone imagery, when uh, somebody was going through and annotating it, there was just over 100 items that were identified. And you might say, well, basically, then how accurate is the drone at identifying the trash? Well, one of the things we did was we moved all the small pieces. And when we did that, uh, the numbers got closer. And when we removed, re removed the pieces of paper, it got even closer. Um, so what it's telling us is that we're flying at a height that is identifying larger pieces of trash, and perhaps we need to come to a lower level to identify some smaller uh, pieces. So we're, we're playing around with that in the second field uh, uh, testing uh, season. The great thing about the drone is that it allows us to do things we're not able to do with on the boots on the ground, and that is cover a wider area um, and to cover uh, a, a an area over a, a multiple time spans. So we can fly the drone, let's say, uh, today, and then we can go back three months later, fly the drone again, another three months later, fly the drone again, and we can have those images to compare to one another to see um, what things are looking like. So what's next? As I said, we're starting our second field testing season. We're gonna change some things up just a little bit. Um, we're making some adjustments. Uh, we're going to do some further testing to see um, uh, whether or not those um, methods are repeatable and, and, and accurate in, in some different areas that we were unable to get to in the first testing season. Uh, we're also working on the aerial imagery um, to refine and annotate things a little bit more closely, looking at is there a difference between plastic? Can we see plastic items versus everything else? 
or um, are we just to the point where we can just say um, we can identify trash versus um, um, everything else? Uh, so we're, we're doing some work on that. And of course, we're continuing our outreach to stakeholders. Um, that is pretty much my talk. Uh, I would love to, to hear from any citizen monitoring groups who are doing some trash methods, um, ways to participate. Uh, you can contact uh, myself or our, uh, my partner in uh, the Bay Area. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. And, and we've had some citizen monitoring groups go out and do some of the testing with us. And, uh, and, and they've, they've been great. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter through our website and that will provide you with updates on the project as well. So at this time, I'd like to ask if there's any questions. Quiet group. Thank you. Appreciate your talks, Shelley. Um, and with, within that, you described um, repeatability and resources needed. And then I was curious on sustainability also of the program. So it looks like your unmanned aerial survey would be more sustainable than multiple work crews of different skill levels. Are, are you looking at yeah, so be of your system? Yes, so, so certainly I, I think you're correct in that, um, that it would be more sustainable. Um, it depends on what your management question is. Uh, what we've noticed is that uh, of the folks up, up in the Northern California are more, they, they are more interested in how much space that the trash is taking up in the environment. And I think to a certain extent we could do that with the drone. Uh, but in Southern California, they want to know uh, for instance, it, are, are the bag bands working? Um, how, how are the numbers changing based on that? And we can do a little bit of that with the drone, but I think if, if, if we want um, uh, to, to look at it differently, we actually have to have some boots on the ground, um, particularly as we're um, finding some new um, things that people should uh, potentially be concerned with. We're starting to find a lot of uh, e-cigarette waste in the environment. Um, I think Greg was involved with some, uh, a project that was looking at um, trash off of highways and they were finding what a lot of dental picks and, and things like that. And you're not gonna necessarily get that from uh, looking at it from a, a, a particular height. I'll just add add to that question uh, the answer real quick. The um, the methods that they're compiling are going to be a resource of methods that could be used by other groups. So, of course, uh, Squirp will always do a certain amount of um, work and research and what have you. But really, what we're trying to do is identify and describe the different methods for trash monitoring for all the different business purposes. And and so the sustainability question is a really good one but it may be more sustainable for some entities in California to deploy people, um, or they already have a group of citizen uh, cleanup groups that want to go do cleanup anyway, so then they deploy a method through that other mechanism kind of a thing. But um, really the goal here is to provide a, a suite of tools that are well described and that are um, uh, best de uh, described at uh, how well they address different management questions of different scales. Okay, and then within that conversation then, is part of what you're doing on your toolbox or whatever is is making more uniform training to bring those groups together so they become certified or or validated by some mechanism that you create yeah i think overarching all of this is a quality assurance uh, management system kind of a framework and again one of the descriptions of the tools will include the amount of uh, required training um, or the amount of work that's needed to assure a certain kind of a quality management quality objective of some sort. And so again, that varies all over the place depending on which methods. Um, we also are, um, she, she kind of alluded to it, we have a, another computer vision project that would be a method that maybe potentially could de deployed on street sweepers so that as street sweepers or other vehicles in, in municipal landscapes are driving around, they have the ability to also capture some trash data um, so again, it's not, it's not going to work in every situation and it's not going to always be, um, 
the right tool of choice for a, an entity, but in the case of that street sweeper method, um, and it would really provide more granular data. It would provide quantitative information in addition to just how much trash we think is on the side of the streets. So there's a lot of advantages. We're trying to just do a, a, a pros and cons kind of a approach right now. Um, and then behind the scenes, there's also a significant amount of work being done on the data model so that um, as you start bringing data from different me monitoring methods, like citizen groups go out and grab something and a, a drone flies over and grabs something and what else happens, um, how do you bring that data back together so that you can uh, in integrate it and answer management questions and tell stories? So there's a lot of sort of layers to this project that Shelly alluded to. Yeah. But she's leading it now with the trash monitoring work group, so we're helping lead it. So. Yeah. And part of, part of our mission is to uh, make sure that we have standardized data, particularly so those groups in Northern California can say, this is how my area compares to a, an area in Southern California. Um, so it's been uh, very important. We've realized that there's just a vast array of different types of data sets out there that are measuring different things. So it would be good to pull them all together. Hi, thank you for your presentation. I'm curious if you've worked with youth at all or have any plans to engage students and teachers in this project? Uh, we, we would be open to doing that. Uh, and we have, to a certain extent, we have a, an organization that we work with in Southern California uh, called Algalita. And they uh, brought a crew out to do some test, field testing with us. And they had students from um, Cal State Long Beach and some other uh, local uh, area schools. Um, but, and we're, we're very open to working with those groups. All right, thanks. Well, 